Okay, hi everyone. Um, and I'm Valerio, um, and welcome uh, everyone to TechSite, which is a new event format by, by VP Takers for VP Takers. Uh, the goal of TechSite is about exchanging and developing uh, uh, our knowledge about programming languages and all kind of work done at VP Tech by having uh, roundtables focused on specific topics. And today's topic is about the return on experience on GraphQL APIs in production of VP. Um, so it means that we are not really looking about uh, for a unique and conclusive truth, but rather, um, and we are not also uh, going to provide an answer to the question, should you use GraphQL? It's actually something that should be up to every team to decide. Um, so I'm going to start off with a few questions and we'll see where the conversation goes. Of course, uh, people following the stream, the streaming can participate in the conversation by uh, sharing their opinion or providing questions from by uh, I will try to blend them into the discussion whenever possible, or our speakers will expand on them later. So let's start first by uh, introducing all the participants to today's event. Would you mind starting, Theo? Yeah, sure. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Theophile Kalumbu and I'm uh, the lead developer of the sample management team uh, where we're building uh, some tools for the warehouse uh, digital factory. And I've been working at the, uh, here at VP for three years and I'm using uh, GraphQL in production. Thank you, Theo. You're welcome. Vincent? Hello. Okay. Hello, I am Ramzi Darmoul. I am architect on the distribution challenge domains and I was a lead developer on navigation team and uh, I want to share with you my production experience with GraphQL on front side. Hello, I'm Vincent. I'm working mainly on O2 project on what we call facade or glue and I'm between Smack and Spot. So I will share with you how I call Smack API, Graph API. Cool, thank you. And I'm Valerie Gary. I'm a manager in the technical transversal governance, and I'm very interested in the topic of GraphQL. So, um, so you will obviously, you're, you're all here because you have all used GraphQL in production. So you have a certain amount of experience with it. Um, and I, but I want to start the discussion by, uh, you know, the end, You're, by asking you a direct question. Are you satisfied with it? I, yeah, maybe I can, I can answer first yeah. because uh, uh, let's say it has been a success story with GraphQL, actually. Uh, my uh, success with GraphQL started when I was at the media team, uh, media operation team, uh, where we started using it and um, it has uh, been uh, used uh, and now again, and to the success, especially uh, the user, the developer experience. Yes, on navigation part, I, it's mitigated. It's a success for front-end developers, but for back-end developers, it was causing huge problems, and it was a, a success on beginning. But after, with uh, more peaks and more traffic, it became more difficult to us to maintain it. Okay, interesting. That's all. I, I think maybe it's depending of the technology, the framework that you used. I know that uh, a lot of people are very okay with it when they used to do the GraphQL on the front side using mainly Apollo. I think this is what you use still. Yes, exactly. Uh, uh, our our um, stack is mostly JavaScript, and uh, the ecosystem is very if uh, blind minded. It's very nice tooling uh, provided by the Apollo guys. So, yeah, th this is something that is very strange in GraphQL because uh, you defined a lot of types, but in the other way, it's easier. I think it's easier to use it in JavaScript where it's not very typed. Hmm. Anyways, and oh, yeah. so that's actually something interesting uh, because it, it sort of correlates with the, 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 the next question I wanted to ask you guys. Uh, what do you wish you had known before architecting your first GraphQL API based on your actual experience? Um, 
On my part, I will say the I call it the highway uh, to the n plus one query problem. <laughs> it's like uh, uh, you can go into this problem very easily because uh, you have to reason about these resolvers. Uh, for me, it's the most, um, let's say, um, complex uh, thing to understand when you start. And a tricky thing, uh, when you define your schema, uh, it, everything is enumerable by default. And so you have to put all that banks uh, every time to the, oh no, this is um, uh, required. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. But I, I also think that the plus one problem is not new. It's not. For me, it's not really a problem of GraphQL because you can do uh, REST API have exactly the same issue. Um, in the other way, I think GraphQL can do something to resolve this issue. Yes, you're, you're, you're right. Uh, the thing is that uh, you're right that uh, it's not a GraphQL specificity, but uh, in GraphQL, you end up in this situation very easily because you have to reason about a graph with fields and resolver, and newcomers uh, don't realize that you're doing 20 calls or 100 calls. Uh, yeah, because it's I confirmed that. <laughs> confirm that. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It's, it's become also a problem of security and, uh, and performance because you can go very deeper in the graph and ask something very yeah very heavy that take a lot of time and i i was uh, on the front team before uh on flash cell uh we, we we decided to not going to graphql thanks to ramsey uh no really we we chose that because we we think we will have some uh, problem of performance uh, because the front end of VP have a lot of requests, a lot of, even more than you think. Um, and also at the same time, we wanted to disable the cache. So the, the amount of re requests will go and go. And now we have uh, Privalia that comes mm -hmm. to the same front. And we have COVID impact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, also. So yes. um, I think the choice was pretty good. I, I'm not sure we, I'm sure we can do it with GraphQL, but performance for me is the uh, most, uh, the biggest issue. I, I agree with you. When we started the project since uh, three years, it, we started on .NET and it was a new framework on .NET. It was a version 0.5 or something like that. And it's uh, we don't have a lot of feedback about how uh, how the serialization is done, how how GraphQL.NET handle a peak a peak of uh, calls because we have a typical system on VP that we don't have a stable load, but we have a peak at the opening, and this is the difficulty for us. Okay. So th that's actually something very interesting that actually, um, you know, got me uh, a lot of thinking. Uh, for example, we use GraphQL at DevOps, and it's something that took me a lot of thinking and when I had to start uh, working on this project. Uh, so do you think that the tech stack, or the tooling and more in general, uh, the available GraphQL ecosystem uh, helped the dev team improve the team's velocity or had it, had it, it any impact on the outcome of the project? So, for example, you mentioned, uh, Ramzi, you mentioned uh, .NET. Do you think that the GraphQL ecosystem in .NET is mature enough to have a, a nice developer experience? I think uh, on .NET, uh, it was a not mature project and uh, we started with a very low version and um, one of our problems is, uh, is the serialization. The data are sent to, from server to the front-end uh, guys are, are sometimes huge because we have a lot of banners, a lot of homes and the payload is very big. And mm -hmm. one of our difficulty was that the, they use uh, one native serializer, it's new software serializer and is the bad test in the in the test they have more they we have others better they, like utf wheat etc and we can use it and it causes sometimes problems for us okay okay i see 
And you, Theo, what did you use in your in your project about tech stack? Yeah, it, it's uh, interesting. So um, on the on the sample management team, where we're using uh, so Apollo Server um, uh, with JavaScript, uh, mm -hmm. the tooling was uh, great. Uh, however, uh, we missed some, let's say, tracing or logging. Uh, you, we had to implement APM, for example, mm -hmm. because uh, Apollo uh, is great, but they uh, want to provide their own solution. Mm -hmm. uh, this was uh, one problem. Um, and on the client, uh, we just uh, use some um, some uh, type generation on the end part uh, to be able to to communicate. That's the, I think one of the beauty of GraphQL is the type system. So uh, developers, uh, to answer your question, uh, were very productive and the velocity was great because uh, we had to just define a contract, generate the types. So uh, one developer could work on the client, another one on the server. Uh, at the same time. So this was great for, for me and uh, for us because as we were a new team, we had to, to, to ship uh, features very fast and it, it helped us a lot. Okay, that's cool. Um, so was this part of, so basically the, or a more global question is actually, what, what were the reasons that made you choose GraphQL at the beginning of the, pro of, you know, of the project? And was uh, developer experience one of these reasons? Uh, on my part, um, let's say that the, the main reason is uh, when you have different clients uh, and uh, we need to fetch the data uh, differently, which is the first point. And when you have a huge amount of microservices to call and when the, the front end is uh, tightly coupled to all those microservices. So using the GraphQL uh, like a facade, uh, using the backend, backend for front end pattern help us to, to remove this uh, tightness. And, and yeah, um, the, the developer tooling is very uh, excellent. So it helped a lot. One, uh, one example, uh, we were uh, working with students at the beginning of the project and uh, they uh, were using GraphQL and it was uh, very easy for them to write queries because if you write the wrong query, it won't go through the, through the server. And if it doesn't compile, it doesn't go through. So it was helping them, yeah. Yes, I, I think the playground is very is a tool that helps a lot to be productive. In fact, mm. uh, comparing to a simple swagger, if I can say simple, um, you can really it's really a place to play. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and this with the swagger, you cannot try many things. You are very uh, you are in a context where you put only some parameters. You cannot look at all the data that the, maybe the product have for you. And it's very restricted. But in another way, uh, maybe some new people are very, um, have some difficulty doing queries because it's much more complicated to create a big query than mm -hmm. just passing few parameters in uh, let's say a query params or even body or just an URL. So I know it can stop somebody to do GraphQL. Yes, about uh, big queries is an interesting thing. When we decide to move to GraphQL is uh, to avoid uh, to have a big payload as we have uh, several interfaces like iOS, Android. We need to give to the autonomy to front developers to fetch their proper types, field, etc. But there is a limit sometimes. Sometimes when we have uh, a big autonomy, we can fetch everything in the same time. I take a simple, a simple. We can take the, we can, we can fetch the home, the header, and the footer in the same query, and this yeah. that can generate a big payload, and can after generate some problem of serialization of big payload of, uh, of network issues and something like that. We can regroup everything in one query, but uh, what is the limit? I don't know. Okay, so you actually say that was actually one of the points that made us go to GraphQL. But that can really bite hard your you back uh, yeah. because you, you have freedom, but you also have freedom, extreme freedom, which which comes you know, and sometimes it's not very good for for your systems. So this leads me to the next question: Is was GraphQL able to meet the expectations on the points that made you choose it? So, for example, you, one of the points you mentioned was freedom and being able to adapt to different front ends. 
was the case? Was it the case? Uh, yes, uh, I have uh, the experience with, with GraphQL give us autonomies and it's uh, res respect our uh, our expectation, but only don't respect our expectation on performance side. Just uh, the if we have a huge system with let's say uh, thirteen thousand query per second it's become a little bit hard to handle it. And on specifically on .NET uh, sample, it's uh, everything is handled by the .NET. And to profile it, it's become very hard and not easy to handle it. Yeah. Um, maybe I would like to add something about what you're saying, Ramzi. It's true that I think uh, on your part, uh, maybe you, you have many clients and you have public facing API. And yes. on our side, we're more, uh, I. We know all our clients, so we, we, we can control what they're sending. And uh, like we say, with great power comes great res responsibilities. And uh, GraphQL is about saying, oh, clients, send me anything. I can handle it. And that I think you may maybe have a more problem on that part. Yes. Also, and, there is some something we didn't uh, say before, is that the query, we need to pass it. So it, it already take time just mm -hmm. to do that and to validate the query, can I answer or not? It's already a cost. It's already a cost just to know that. And a, a REST API is very doomy. You got a, a, just an URL and so you can go through to the, the right answer. Even you can cache it. You can put the URL as a key and the response as a, the cache body. In GraphQL, is, it's maybe more tricky to do that because yes. most of the query is done in post. You can, I know you can do it in, uh, in standard get method, uh, almost like we saw in Kibana, we've got a long query. But this is not what is done by default by the most of the client. That's so I yeah. agree with you, Vincent. And one of the difficulty we used to have a CDN on VP side. As GraphQL is a post, and we have several and several types of queries, it's become very difficult to handle all this post on the CDN because uh, on the CDN generally we handle a get or you need to make some hash for your post to identify all types of posts but we have hundreds as we have several version of mobile and every time a version update of mobile 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 and we keep old version it's become sometimes a little bit hard oh I think you muted Valerio <laughs> Yes, you're right. Sorry. So I think you, you were talking about uh, one of the solutions which is provided by uh, Apollo server, for example, which is persisted queries. But again, it's not a silver bullet because, yeah, as you said, when you have a high vari variability of clients and so query patterns, it becomes hard to cache and cache everything. Okay. Um, on this topic, we have um, a spot, spot on question by Sergio. Uh, the question says, usually the need for GraphQL is due to two factors. One is high, high variability of, in data needs of API clients, and two, the need to improve API call performance by transferring only, only the required data. So how important were each of these factors for you? And by the way, there's, thanks, sir. So does anyone of you want to answer to this? Uh, I, I can maybe talk about the first point, yeah, uh, sure. the high variability in the data needed uh, for IP clients. Uh, we had that case uh, on the media uh, products where, uh, let's say, uh, one client uh, needed certain fields and the other uh, client didn't need them. So thanks to GraphQL, we were able to just select what we needed. And it was the same API, but uh, clients could fetch what they want, let's say. Uh, so this is how we, we can address that with GraphQL. Uh, the variability of uh, what the client needs is, is, is done for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ramzi, Vincent, do you want to provide your own views? 
can you share the question too about performance? Yes, the yes. one of the one of the objective of GraphQL is to have just one call or something like that. But sometimes it's become hard to maintain a big a big payload. We need to find the the good balance. Uh, for for GraphQL and to avoid to have payload. Sometimes it's better to have two two calls than to have one calls with a huge payload. And mm -hmm. this system can consume a lot of CPU, can do a lot of things that can help us on performance side. Yeah, I imagine that might be a huge, yeah. huge issue when you scale up to the levels where, for example, navigation is today. And when CPU uh, intensive tasks such as serializing and deserializing your payload becomes an issue. Mm. Okay. It's very interesting what you said, because it's I, I'm not doing that, querying uh, multi multi querying the same query, uh, like your header and footer or, or something else. But it's I think it's going to do exactly the the inverse of what we want, because uh, this is what you said, it's a big payload, but if the client make many requests, it's easier to load balance the request. So many server can answer to it. You can have the answer on different time and okay, your front need to be able to, uh, to be async with the different response. But I think this is very funny to see that uh, something that looks great at the beginning, I can co I can have ma aggregate many part of data in the same query. Yes, became uh, in fact not so good. Yes, because, because you, you have, cannot load you, that long. You have no limits. Have you have the types defined? Yeah, you can you can query everything. You can query all the website in the same query, yeah. and this is <laughs> it's, it's yeah. a huge. That's why sometimes some controls on REST API mm -hmm. to handle only the amount of data needed. It's mm -hmm. not a yeah. bad solution. It's, I, I, uh, I think the, the problem is that uh, even in the GraphQL, when you read the documentation, they say, hey, hello, just uh, query, make yeah. queries, and you, you're good to go. And I, I see that in the front end. Um, and uh, it's not because you can fetch everything that you'll do. You, you have to do it at the initialization of your uh, application. You can think about uh, fetching only the right thing. You change mm -hmm. the screen, you load the, another part, and then uh, yeah, but the, matter, the matter is, uh, for the front end of VP, you don't know the client, so you yeah. cannot trust the client. Exactly. I think inside VP, we can do pretty much what we want, because okay. it's it, easier yeah. to go to the team that yeah. make and, uh, yeah. that query and kick their ass, but <laughs> <laughs> on the front end, it would not happen. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so we've, we've been talking about actually already uh, about consuming these GraphQL APIs. Um, and for example, Vincent, you have experience about with that because you're consuming uh, Smack APIs, which are made in, in GraphQL. Yes. Uh, and I'd like to focus a bit more on this topic now. Um, okay. So how about the velocity uh, of a client team that must consume your, some GraphQL API, and what pros and cons have you seen? Actually, uh, as I said, uh, internal of VP, I don't see many issue about doing GraphQL, because first, we don't have so many queries, and I think we have also the infrastructure to be able to handle it. Um, just to to give you some context, Smack is uh, in Go, Golang. I think Valerio, you know better than me. Uh, and the front end of Smack is in React with Apollo also. Um, so this is mainly the first client, React and Apollo was the first client. And now for the facade, for the glue service, I'm using F Sharp. And I'm using a type provider. Type provider is a technology of F sharp that is generating type, uh, giving some schema 
So GraphQL have a very good schema. Mm -hmm. And so it's very easy to generate type. So in my code, I don't have to define uh, anything. Just in one line, I've got all the type, all the query I can do. And I can also um, have some specific query. And from these queries, uh, I generate other type. It means that if in your query, you only uh, ask for a name and a first name, in your type, you only see name and first name. OK. And, um, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. I got you. Go ahead, go ahead. And okay. just the type will be if this is an int in the generated type, it will be int. And uh, also, I something that I love, it's uh, no nullable stuff. This is one of the most powerful thing in GraphQL, I think. No, and yeah. also non-nullable uh, collection. Mm -hmm. mean, yeah. It's not empty and it's not null. It's yeah. very great. I agree. Uh, we have one, another question uh, by Sergio on this topic. Uh, on the topic of yeah, um, versioning and consuming and this sort of API. And he's, ask, he's asking, evolving the GQL API contract can be challenging because breaking changes can break the API clients. How are you dealing with contract evolution? Are the clients of your API under your control or do you need to cater to third parties' needs? Okay, on this side, I will take the front example. As we have a lot of version, uh, and we have a lot of mobile versions that don't update their phone. We need to keep always the same object and sometimes you need to duplicate objects because we can't make a breaking change because, because it will bring, uh, break old versions that are not updated. And uh, to maintain this is really sometimes very hard. And to see if this object is really called or no, it's still called by the old version, because we can't force people to upgrade their version. We can't have it, this information. We need to have some logs or some specific case, but uh, or rest, it was easier because uh, generally, on, we have uh, several URLs with versioning, and it's easier to see if this URL version 1 is called or version 2 is still called or no. But on GraphQL, to to make some to log information that this type is still called by old version of mobile is sometimes hard, and we can't make breaking changes. We need to duplicate types or something to add new types or something like that, because people, we, are, we can't force people to update their version of mobile. Once again, it's very interesting because this is exactly uh, the inverse of, of what we saw in documentation yes. and articles of GraphQL. Always it's, a, uh, it's easy to have versioning in GraphQL because you don't need it, but mm. the reality is a lot of different. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that is quite surprising to me because, I mean, every time I, I, I read about GraphQL, the, the clear directive, do not, do not do versioning. So when you are in such a, a case, a use case where you need to support a large number of clients and sometimes they cannot update and you're left uh, with having to support all of these, I can I understand it can become a bit hard. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Usually they... Um... They suggest you to add new fields and not remove uh, old ones, yeah. but you can end up with a messy, uh, let's say, schema. But they provide the deprecated field, so there are some initiatives to 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 fix to handle that. But uh, yes, it's not the deprecated is just a tag, but the field is still here, and exactly. they can request it. That's when, you, and on the front side, we don't know if. Devices still call deprecated field. That's the difficulty to. to I think to there is some um, stuff to to metric all the fields that are called and uh, what the people are doing, but there is also a cost of performance for that. And uh, I think it's not only CPU but also memory can have a big uh, impact. Yeah, to have a debug mode uh, on production is uh, risky for us. That's why generally uh, we prefer to avoid uh, to avoid it. Okay, uh, I want to I want to actually rebound on this topic. Um, so the debugging topic. It's 
I, I really think that debugging is part, should be part of the programming language or framework's design and is strongly part of the developer experience of a technology stack. So what can you tell us about the GraphQL debugging experience in production, of course? Uh, maybe I can start. Um, so that uh, given the fact that GraphQL has only one endpoint and it's say every time 200 OK, uh, it can be uh, difficult to, to spot a problem. And um, if uh, when you work on the server and if you don't handle the errors properly, uh, you may end up with an uh, error that you don't see. Uh, this is uh, one first problem I see uh, with that. Uh, and I was like I was saying at the beginning of the, of the talk, um, implementing stuff like APM or logging uh, seems to be uh, important there um, for GraphQL. I think a lot of uh, the job is done in data loader. I don't know if we call uh, the thing uh, as the same for every technology, but I think in .NET is data loader. Yeah, in JavaScript too, is the same. Okay. Yes. Um, and but they're, they're not uh, you, it's is, just mandatory. <laughs> yeah, it, this is where you need to to put your back back front and but you need also to be sure that you will go to this data loader. So first you need to take a look at the query and maybe parsing that you own the query because if there is an error in the query, uh, you will not spot it if you don't look at it by your own, I think. Yes, I agree. Uh, debugging on GraphQL, it's really very hard. Why? Because we have just one URL and uh, when we need to, with the rest, you have a fetch with several, we have a get with several URL and you can get it really quickly. But on on GraphQL, you need to have the content, the body of the post to know which field are, are requested, etc. And uh, debugging it, it's hard. And on .NET specifically, it's 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 handled by uh, a package nugget the library from uh, graphql and to debug this it's hard on our project when we have uh, problems with some reservoir with serialization um, it's hard we know that it's it's in the library of graphql but we don't know when well, exactly and how. Yeah, and maybe I, I can add uh, because we have been focusing a lot on the server, but uh, on the client, when you're using React, for example, you will go with uh, Apollo, uh, Apollo React, uh, and it looks very nice, but uh, it's like a black box, so it handles caching for you as well. And uh, sometimes you don't understand what's happening, so you have to go deep into Apollo and try to, to, to debug because it handles the caching, it handles the, the, your state, your, and um, many things that are provided out of the box. Uh, so for a counter or hello world application, it's great. But in an enterprise application, it can be sometimes, I think, difficult to understand what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for example, if I can share my experience, um, the, 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 the experience of debugging what's happening in production on GraphQL vastly improved once we uh, integrated with the Elasticsearch APM, which is capable, capable out of the box to introspect AP, uh, uh, yeah, um, GraphQL queries. And you have the whole history of what's happening. And that's where we, for example, I understood that we have where we were uh, encountering the N plus one problem because one had to look at the call stack for, for a specific uh, resolver, I could see that our code stack was about probably a hundred lines and that's where I said ah okay we might have a problem there yes so exactly, exactly. I, 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 it is quite mandatory yes exactly and when you were saying uh, what I wish I, uh, someone told me uh, when I started with Raphael is just okay you stay here I show you the APM logs and I show you this uh, uh, diagram this flam diagram and you can see that it can be harmful otherwise you you don't know yeah. yeah, and and I'm I've got a question. So, do you uh, are you able to uh, to make graph or um, yes graph in Grafana, for example, to see which field or type is the most uh, used? Because because since we can uh, create uh, what we want in the query, we can request for everything. 
I think it's hard to display a, a summary of what users do uh, in the Grafana, but maybe I'm wrong. You know, because it's it's pretty easy to to in Grafana to say uh, this URL is a must uh, called. But in, uh, Personally, I tried, but and it was already written uh, GraphQL endpoints. GraphQL yes, <laughs> I, I I didn't uh, even have time. You have only the uh, the endpoint, of, and yeah, uh, you but don't have the body. Yeah. Exactly, but hopefully, I had uh, let's say the dependency that were called by GraphQL, and then I could I was able to see what's happening behind. But GraphQL itself, one endpoint, it's a headache to to know who does what. Okay. This is um, really, just to, to end with this, uh, you, we're talking about debugging, but I just want to add something about testing. Uh, I have to do some uh, unit tests uh, and mock the SMAC API. The matter, it's like an end-to-end -end test. And so I mock the response to a query from SMAC. But the matter is, I just get a post. So I need myself in the test to pass the query to know which is a good answer, uh, the, the good mock to return to the query. And this part is very uh, not so easy to do. I think it's not hard, but mm. it's a little harder than just a URL response. And uh, I think it's the same problem that the cache, in fact. But yes, and uh, sometimes on GraphQL, we have, uh, I think, uh, it's a opinion, a problem about the software design. Because we say that we have uh, microservices, but generally with Gra GraphQL, we regroup everything in the same payload. That means we are not on microservices. Let's say we have a home page, you have a catalog. Imagine that you have a home page and the catalog in the same endpoint GraphQL. That means we are not on microservices and it's both related a little bit. And I found this a little bit strange. Okay. That's uh, all very interesting. And, and, and for example, this is a topic that is partly developed uh, in, uh, in the GraphQL Federation specification, which is another whole history in itself. Uh, okay. Um, and now, more into no, okay. we've, we've seen lots of aspects of GraphQL uh, goods, both goods and good and not so good. Uh, and hint, in hindsight, which part of GraphQL worked well for you in production in the project you've worked on? As I said before, the the schema is is very a, a great part of GraphQL because uh, okay in the REST API we can do some uh, open API schema using Swagger mm -hmm. and everything. It's not it's not so um, it's not as good as GraphQL. Uh, the typing is not as good, and also I think Swagger. Uh, has come uh, after and is not directly connected to the HTTP request with mm -hmm. you. And the fact is, I said that um, I'm generating type from the GraphQL query and type, but I'm also do it for some uh, Swagger API that we used in VP. And what I see uh, a lot of it's bad Swagger definition because there, there is a lot of uh, framework, but just are not doing it. So teams need to manage it by hand. And yeah. some other like .NET or JavaScript can generate it from type, but sometimes it's wrong. And so the client cannot be generated. Okay. And using GraphQL can generate a very good client. Yeah. Uh, I agree with uh, what you said, Vincent, as well. Uh, the type safety uh, uh, and the, the generation, the tooling uh, that uh, help us to to provide quality, uh, let's say, um, application that uh, with uh, very few bugs uh, for the for the front end is uh, for me a, a plus. Uh, but of course, we know that there is complexity uh, in the other side of the application to handle. Yes. <laughs> I think the funniest part is to have the playground to see that we can 
request uh, all fields needs, all types needs to regroup them, how we need some front end side. But sometimes on back end side, uh, we have uh, side effects and bad effects on this. Okay. Um, so I think we, we talked about being uh, writing and maintaining server side GraphQL. We talked about consuming these GraphQL APIs, the pros and cons. We've talked about the struggles we can see in production. So I think we have a nice overview of the whole developer experience. Um, now I want to have, with all of, this, of, all of this knowledge in front of us, what would you say is the best usage, based on your experience again, of GraphQL APIs within an information system of a, of a company? So when would you use it versus a more classic HTTP REST, REST API? Uh, maybe I can start. <laughs> I, I would just say you 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 may not need it. You you you're not gonna need it. Just use HTTP Classic uh, because uh, it's a shiny technology and people just go go to it and just write GraphQL because it's cool and then realize that it's not the right tool to solve your problem. Um, I will start um, investing time on it if I see that I have different clients with different needs and different uh, data sources that I'm fetching every time on my clients, for example. I'm not totally agree. I think there is some good points uh, for using GraphQL. And uh, a lot of time when I'm working on many APIs of VP, uh, I, I need to ask new data, new fields. And so teams need to change their contract and we know even with Swagger, it's hard to change stuff. We can version uh, in URL, but we also know that it's not always done. Um, and I think when you've got many clients and in VP, we are requesting uh, data almost everywhere. We need a small part of this, a small part of that. And if the team uh, answer OK to each request, they will have a big, big payload also. Uh, and GraphQL can solve this problem. Uh, I think this, this was the question. We can um, take down the overflow, the fetching overflow that I've, I've done before in, uh, in REST API. Okay, because mm -hmm. maybe we use only 10% of the payload in the response. Uh, it's We all agree that it's better if yeah. we can use 100%. Yeah, I agree. To, to use GraphQL or to use uh, REST is the same question. Should I use uh, SQL or no SQL? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's really depend, depend of the problem elementic. But uh, I think on front side, where you have a lot of client, uh, a lot of a change, you can have a big payload. I recommend to avoid it because we will have a performance issue. And also if you have some CDN that you already paid it, and uh, that you, you can use it <laughs> while using GraphQL to have more problems. That's you, right. On the front, you have a lot of clients, but they are asking always the same request. They want the same data, in fact. So mm -hmm. it's like having one client or maybe two or three with mobile device, but this is almost same time the same info that we need to display. Yeah. Inside yeah. VP, Every team needs different information, mm. so but you can control it. Okay, uh, I think that we we are almost running out of time, and I want to cover uh, the, the questions we received that I could not uh, uh, add to the conversation uh, yet. Um, so we, um, let's go to the very first question that has been unanswered so far. Uh, so hello, so it's from by Jesus Vargas who says, hello, nice and interesting conversation. Did you have experience implementing cache? How was your experience? So I think that Ramsey already talked about it uh, briefly. Do you want to expand on the, on the topic, Ramsey? 
Yes, uh, about using cache, we try to use some memory cache to store some shared element. It was uh, a little bit successful, but what we need really to have a CDN to have uh, another level of cache, uh, like a CDN cache or something like that. And uh, after some analysis, we decided to not do it because it's very hard, hard, hard to maintain it because it's a post and we have uh, like uh, 100 uh, payload uh, different from clients between version and uh, to have it uh, will cost a lot I think on CDN to have a several version and uh, the reasons impact and we decided to not implement it there is load balancer there is some element like this that basic that we use it and uh, we don't decide to have uh, more depth cache Okay, Thanks. maybe I can add something on caching, but more on the GraphQL oh. engine, uh, uh, where we were talking about data loaders and data loaders can be loader. batching and caching. And yes. in one of our projects, we were using, uh, we enabled batching and caching, but we uh, we uh, very fastly removed the caching because we had to think about the caching validation and this was starting to become complicated. <laughs> so, yeah. Make yeah, sure the validation is indeed a huge problem. It's also more complicated. As you said, Theo, we can have some cache on the client. Mm -hmm. so, so you don't know where is the cache anymore, and it can be a nightmare. Yeah, that's true. I have the feeling that uh, given the fact that we are not relying on the uh, basic uh, cache system provided by HTTP, uh, we are uh, reinventing the wheel and putting small cache everywhere, it's my feeling. <laughs> okay, so next we have, uh, thank you by the way, Jesus, and thanks to everyone who's asking questions. Uh, so we have another answer, question by Ami Kansari, which is troll mode, uh, and he quotes a, a tweet, uh, which he says, GraphQL is great because instead of writing boring APIs, I can just mess about doing clever schema introspection, metaprogramming all day long, and get paid twice what a normal API programmer does, because nobody else understands what is going on. Oof, it was a lot to read. Uh, and it says then, but more, uh, to be more serious, isn't it, isn't it easier to expose some adapter, adapted read models and let front-end dev, front devs create this, their backend for, for front-end? BFF, backend for front-end. For front so he's actually, I think he's actually asking, uh, instead of you know uh, doing lots of uh, maybe over-engineered stuff from GraphQL APIs, is it better to have uh, some sort of REST APIs um, which are dedicated to front-ends? So, for example, you have a, a, you have a REST, you have an API which is dedicated to the, the mobile device, one which is dedicated to the desktop website, another which is dedicated to television, I don't know what yeah, else. Yeah, I would like to answer that simply that I, the origin of GraphQL, when they invented it, is because they ended up doing just kind of stuff, creating uh, uh, let's say an API and then giving some fields in the query to filter and then oh there is the PlayStation device and the mobile device so we're gonna do an endpoint for PlayStation and the mobile device and at the end uh, GraphQL allow us to have a normalized way to do that so yeah and um, doing this this is exactly what happened on the front end of VP we have uh, an API for mobile and one for website and when we change something on the left, we need to also do it on the right because sometimes you want to share something. And I think uh, data type of, Gra of GraphQL is good for that. Um, I don't think there is a silver bullet anyway. But okay. Yeah. yeah. So okay. we have two questions left to cover, if I'm not mistaken. And very on fire today with questions, so thank you very much, Sergio. Uh, the first one is, is it possible to perform consumer-driven contract testing in GraphQL, such as Pact, uh, Pact Broker, and if it's possible, are you planning on using consumer-driven contract, at least for contract consumed by third parties? Uh, by the silence, I'm assuming that we do not have uh, experience using consumer-driven contract testing. I might not, be wrong not on my side, but I will be uh, curious to read more about that and uh, see later. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, so sorry for that, Sergio. And the last one, uh, Steve by Sergio, is question about contract evolution. Publishing different big breaking version of the GQL API contract is just a matter of deploying different versions of the API implementation in separated URLs. Any reason why you don't want to just do that? As I said before, there is no silver bullet. It's depending really on the change, in fact, because breaking change can be many things. Maybe it's just something that you delete from the response, but it can also be just totally different. So I'm pretty sure we can also uh, add a new implementation on a different URL even with GraphQL. Uh, I think the versioning that we do in REST, we can do it in GraphQL. Yes. I, th so, I think it can be, but uh, I take the, the simple of .NET. You have only one URL and I need to fork solution to have this kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, resolution. And I think to have uh, several URLs of GraphQL can help if they evolve their specification to have this uh, easier uh, on easiest ways, it can help us to debug faster, to have uh, more, break, to handle more breaking changes easier, and it can be. But when they come in GraphQL, they say types will resolve all the breaking changes problems. Don't worry, never delete a field and only add, 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 and everything, it will be okay. I think we can mix both things, maybe, because let's say you have two big uh, type like uh, blog post and uh, comment. You can have separate URL like we do in REST, and behind them you have two different API of GraphQL, and even you can get uh, benefit of it just to not overfetch data that will be not used. It's not a big deal, but it's already something good. Yes, but uh, front-end uh, guys, as I say like this, will not be happy because <laughs> they say that GraphQL is to fetch data on the same playground and not to fetch. Why on this case we make, we make, uh, yeah. GraphQL instead of REST. Let's do it on REST. Yeah, I see. Let's yeah. do it simple. But maybe yeah, there, are some yeah. initiative, there is some initiative like the GraphQL Federation is not handling this uh, problem. Maybe you have multiple GraphQL API and one GraphQL yeah. um, that uh, can, uh, can do the yeah, yeah. Yeah. modules and you have one aggregator which is actually doing the heavy heavy lifting of dispatching queries to the different uh, microservices behind. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we see. We, we, I mean, I see that GraphQL is a really interesting topic, and we we spent almost an hour together. Uh, time is run, has run out, unfortunately. Uh, so I would like to say thank you very much to Fio, uh, Vincent, Ramsey, who agreed to participate in this um, interesting conversation and share their experience. So thank you really, really, very much. Uh, thanks to. I would like to say thank you to everyone who listened and to watched and uh, asked question. And thanks to the um, uh, communication team who actually was uh, uh, really keen on putting this uh, new kind of event in place and to give shape to, to the event. So thank you uh, very much. And uh, I hope we hope that you enjoyed uh, the show <laughs> and that uh, we could uh, you know, um, share some interesting knowledge and experience about GraphQL APIs in production at VP. So thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.